Greetings and praise the Lord. I've had the great privilege to minister and teach throughout this country and the world, primarily to smaller and growing churches. And with that, the opportunity to hear the concerns and challenges from pastors and elders who make up this great organization, the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. I have felt their heartbeat, and I too am moved because I believe we are at a defining moment in time as we face an onslaught of evil and spiritual lawlessness that is attacking the church and the principles we stand for. And my heart has been stirred. Truthfully, I've been wrestling with God because I'm feeling His press, His push to take action. And I can't ignore the divine urging of the Holy Spirit. And for that reason, I want to announce that if I'm nominated for the office of the presiding bishop at our upcoming summer convention in Atlanta, Georgia, I will accept the nomination. I know what I'm doing doesn't follow the pattern of normality and seemingly breaking the mold of how things have been done in the past. And yes, it really doesn't make sense. But I can't disregard or ignore the press and guiding force of the Holy Spirit. Some may even question the seemingly unorthodox and non-traditional manner to publicly declare my position. But we're living in a time that we must embrace non-traditional methodology of ministry without compromising the principles and doctrinal truths that we stand by. Now please understand, I've made no deals, I have no allegiances to anyone, I owe no one. I'm not part of a geographical or positional coalition, and I've not promised anyone anything for their support or vote. I'm not trying to promote or embellish my personal well-being, but I want to represent the vast majority of constituents of our organization who often feel their voice and concerns are not heard. Please understand that I am not discrediting any of my colleagues who will accept the nomination for the office of the presiding bishop. They are all honorable and I'm sure qualified. But with the urging of the Holy Spirit, I'm under personal conviction and I want to be obedient. So, what will be the primary objectives in my leadership of the PAW? That's a good question. And let me answer with one word that you can remember, power. The word power really is an acronym that will cause you to easily remember the five principles that will serve as the foundation for my administration. P, prayer, spiritual emphasis. We've been called to spiritually intercede on behalf of the needs of the people around the world through prayer, fasting, and understanding what spiritual warfare is so we can combat satanic schemes and strategies. O, organization, administrative development. I would first engage doing a thorough assessment of our headquarters operation, as well as determine the best use of technology and digitalization to better serve our constituents economically and effectively. W, worship, holiness lifestyle. Worship is a lifestyle. And while I'm a great proponent for change in methodologies and operational procedures, we cannot forget the directive given for Christian believers to be holy in all manner of our lifestyle. E, education leadership and pastoral training. I'm a strong proponent for providing the resources and tools to better prepare and equip our church leaders to tackle the enormous issues of today. I've seen the need and heard the cry from those seeking to hone and improve their skills. R, refocus, commitment to future generations. I feel as an organization 
we must refocus our attention to millennials and Gen Zers. Millennials and Gen Zers now make up nearly 50% of the U.S. population. We must relook at our church culture and seek means to reach new generations coming behind us. Finally, I encourage each of us to pray and seek God's will regarding His choice for leadership of this great organization. I will support anyone who's the leader of this organization, but I want you to vote as God puts in your spirit as opposed to what man tells you to do. I seek to serve and I'm available to answer any questions or engage in dialogue regarding the future of this great organization, the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. I truly solicit your prayers.